One short step from making history for the Republic of Ireland is a side which lacks the injured Mick McCarthy but has a capable replacement in David O'Leary. Paul McGrath returns after missing the win over Northern Ireland to operate at right back instead of Chris Morris. Only three players players have featured in all eight qualifying games Ray Houghton, Tony Cascarino and the Republic's newly crowned player of 1989 Kevin Moran. Suspensions deprived Malta of their senior goalkeeper Cluett and their captain and most influential performer Raymond Vela. So Reggie Cheney who's only 19 makes his World Cup debut in goal and the captaincy passes to John Budishij who earns his living in our third division with Brentford. The Belgian-based Carmel Busatil has scored all of the three goals Malta have managed in this qualifying group. Well, the match is going to start in bright sunshine on this holiday island, and what a holiday it will be for the Irish supporters and indeed the players. The feeling around the fixture is that it's something of a prelude to a party, but Jack Charlton has been stressing that his players have got to do a job Avoiding defeat, of course, is the main priority. But really, when you think that Malta have never won a World Cup qualifying game, it should be more than that. The pitch not dissimilar to that at Lansdowne Road. The grass left rather long. Pat Bonner, of course, in the Republic's goal. The Republic have a free kick with seven minutes gone. And maybe Malta's first real test against the aerial power of Jack Charlton's men. That's Cascarino. It's going to be a big game for Cini. But he certainly uh, seems to have the physical assets for the job. A strapping 19-year-old, and he was well behind the header from Tony Cascarino then. Moran. Whelan taking no chances. Just two defeats for the Republic of Ireland in their last 23 internationals. That's a measure of the consistency. O'Leary, and there's plenty of competition for places as well, which is certainly helping the quality of their performances. Cascarino for Townsend, good advantage played by the referee. Houghton wanting a shot from a good 30 yards. The ricochet chased here by Aldridge. And crossed by McGrath. The goalkeeper's come, Cascarino felt him too. That was one up to Cini. And clever work by Busatil, which ends... In fact, uh, Carmel Busatil was a little annoyed with Di Giorgio for hitting the ball away so far forward so quickly when there was more measured possession really closer at hand. No offside, and it's Houghton. Is this going to be the goal for Sheedy? No. Well, it was Budishij who came back, having led the charge out to try and trap Ray Houghton offside. The linesman was quite clear that play should go on, but Houghton just under hit the cross into the middle, and Sheedy couldn't quite get there first. But it's got the Irish klaxons sounding now. And Cheney in trouble. It's going to be 
a goal kick. But certainly the uh, offside trap and the ability to spring it must be uh, uppermost in the minds of the Republic players and what we've seen so far. Martin didn't get the ball. The direct route was prepared to go back and scrap for it. That's been the essence of the commitment of Jack Charlton's team. Whelan, that's got to be a free kick, and that's very much within range. Staunton was first to the ball, and he wants to get involved. Carafa trying to stop it being taken quickly, but the referee's allowed it to go on. Oh, and it was a most untidy save from Cascarino by Cini. It is a corner. Malta not too impressed about the referee allowing the free kick to be taken quickly. But it was the clearest side of goal that the Republic have had so far, with 20 minutes to go to half-time. And it went beyond Cini, but deflected off the goalkeeper wide of the post. That's Cascarino. Good work by the goalkeeper. That was authentic from the 19-year-old. To fling up an arm that time. as the Republic settling to the task. Ridding their minds now, perhaps, of the consequences of this game and just getting on with playing it. And the opportunities are coming much more regularly now. That was Aldridge. O'Leary made the header his. Wittishij giving plenty of depth to the defending, which allowed Aldridge to stay onside that time. Galea, who's been a regular fixture in Walter's side in plenty of chopping and changing by their West German coach, Horst Hisser, over the period of competition, which stretched back to May... 88 when they started in Belfast, beaten 3-0 by Northern Ireland. O'Leary. Buzzetil. Couldn't twist and turn that time. Helped on by Aldridge to Cascarino. Only Sheedy up in the centre with Aldridge. And arriving late was Townsend. He really set off on a sprint to get into that near post area and very nearly round off the attack. And you do feel if a goal is going to come soon, the aerial route is the most likely. Leary's run across the face of the defenders, and there is the goal! And this time, it is Aldridge. So John Aldridge gets his second goal, only his second goal for the Republic of Ireland, coming in his 28th international. And after hitting a good sequence with Real Sociedad, Six and eight matches in Spain, his tally. He came here in good heart and was in just the right place there to round off the corner kick routine. Carabot. And it was a moment of optimism for Malta. There haven't been too many of them. But Carabot was short of support in the centre. But the first half has gone pretty much according to plan. The Republic have got their first away goal in the group. And it came from John Aldridge. 45 minutes left. 45 minutes before Malta becomes 
the venue for the Republic's party to celebrate a piece of history. At half-time in the Ta'ali Stadium in Malta, it's Malta nil, the Republic of Ireland won. Well, the Maltese fans here have been watching as their team continue their education in world football. I have to say to you, by means of an apology, that the same applies really for the television station out here. They're not used to covering the game, but we're delighted to have uh, broken some new ground to bring you any pictures at all. John Aldridge getting the second half underway. He scored recently in club football against Real Madrid and against Barcelona. But a very special goal for him today. And he's never lost faith in his ability to get on target in the international game. Cascarino has been getting more of the headlines for the Republic in that department. But Aldridge has done what was required of him in the first half to give the Republic of Ireland the lead. And the scene really is set now for them to enjoy the second half with good news that may well have reached them from Seville as well. They've got a free kick. Cascarino, Aldridge is there again. Well, this may only be Malta, and no disrespect to them, but I think international teams of greater repute will struggle with the ball in the air that the Republic of Ireland are so good at supplying, and Cascarino's skill at getting free beyond the far post, which is very much his territory. Carabot. Really running into trouble. Houghton. Now is a chance for the Republic to get players forward from midfield themselves. But Whelan and Townsend involved around the ball. There's Cascarino. Down for Sheedy. And that was hit with the right foot. And it's another example, really, of how Jack Charlton has been able to increase the competition for places because uh, Sheedy will know that Andy Townsend himself could play wide on the left of four. So he's got to keep up his level of performance, and that was a cracking attempt. Close to number two for the Republic. Malta do try to play a passing game. Bissetier has the fitness of uh, full-time football, but he's also got a fiery temper as well. If that incident's anything to go by with Townsend. But while the focus was on what was happening off the ball, the closest Malta have come to getting level. Out from Di Giorgio. Doesn't exactly flatter the Republic of Ireland that the one goal they've got has come from a set piece. That was a good touch by Gregory and Bussetil. O'Leary just pre uh, prevented a catastrophe then. And Bussetil, who is the one marksman that Malta do possess of proven international pedigree, was just going to take one touch too many. And Horst Hieser, the Maltese West German coach, was uh, reacting in great frustration down on the bench. It was nicely worked through until O'Leary stepped across. Cascarino heads the corner out. And Bonner has to make another save from Sherry's first-timer. As Malta have their best spell of the match. Aldridge. 
Oh, and Sheedy's pass has got all the way through to Houghton. That's a party has come across on the cover. And Sherry able to get a tackle in. Sheedy. And here's Morris. A lot of the Irish support behind the goal on the right-hand side, as you can see. And they would have had a very good view of that. And saw the ball keep on rising. And Chris Morris, the Cornishman, looking to crack in a second for the Republic of Ireland. Buttigieg. He certainly gives you a chance to come and tackle him. Whelan. And it's Andy Townsend in the clear. Carabot's got back. Penalty. Carabot on Townsend. Well, Townsend streaking away, and maybe it crossed his mind that his first goal was on. But it wasn't to be. Carabot brought him down. And it's going to be John Aldridge. So successful, except for one famous occasion, with penalties for Liverpool. He's successful here. They're delighted. So Aldridge, who came into this match with only one previous international goal, has got two today. And he wrong-footed the goalkeeper. If you uh, detect a bit of extra noise from the crowd, I don't think you're going to see it, but... Uh, some representatives of the sponsors, or one of the World Cup sponsors, are throwing confectionery into the crowd. It's a corner to the Republic of Ireland. Inside the last two minutes, John Aldridge on a hat trick. And Jack Charlton's team on the verge of confirming their place in Italy. Houghton takes the corner. Oh, and it's off the line, and the follow-up from Shidi after Aldridge had been denied the third goal, which would have meant so much to him. It was a sharp angle downward header, and as it came back off, the player guarding the post. Sheedy couldn't tuck it away either. And the players have been boosted by supporters who I think can rightly claim to be the best in the world. They're loyal, they don't cause an ounce of trouble. And they bring back to supporting really an old fashioned feel. Cascarino. Townsend. They'd love to see the Republic of Ireland strike again. Houghton and Cheney is there. And that's it. The waiting is over. With two goals from John Aldridge, the Republic of Ireland have confirmed their place amongst the World Cup elite for 1990. They're into the finals for the very first time. An extraordinary story, really, for a nation that has no international reputation in team sports but now they have a side which demands respect and supporters the envy of the rest of the world and this holiday island of malta is going to witness some celebration over the next few hours jack charlton has broken even more new ground first the european championships last year and now the world cup winner as a player in 1966 can pit his wits against the best in the world as a manager. A triumph for the players too, who produce more than top-class technique. They felt a passion for the country, even those whose Irishness is more in their...